Hey y'all, Chuck here from Tapanom, Thailand. Hey, it's time for another weekly uh, Q&A. I say weekly, it's probably been three weeks since I did one, sorry. We've uh... <laughs> We just got back from our trip uh, to uh, Khao Payam and uh, Prachuap and Chumpan and all that. It was fun. We had a great time. We had to cut it a little short to come back, but uh, it's to be continued. Uh, I've got an update coming uh, real soon on our plans next. It's going to be really loud. I apologize. It's our festival time is about to begin and we have about three million people coming in this town within a 10-day period so it's a little hectic but i'll do my best and please bear with me with the uh, road noise so uh anyway i have a lot of questions uh, obviously since i'm a little behind so let's let's get started and try to get through this as quick as i can uh, first question is by jackal uh, gb uh, Question, storage. If I move to Thailand with a couple of trunks worth of stuff, uh, I don't necessarily want to lug it around everywhere. Are there places like in the United States that will store my stuff on a monthly basis, uh, like a used store, itself storage type place? Thanks. Um, yeah, they do have storage places. Uh, is it easy to find? No. Uh, you'll have to ask somebody when you get here, uh, wherever you're staying, to uh, try to help you find those places. I tried to get one here in Tapano, but there's not an actual storage facility here. But people will store your stuff uh, inside their homes. A lot of people leave their vehicles uh, stored up here, and uh, they live in other countries and also some belongings. But it's in it's in somebody on somebody's personal property that uh, will take care of it for you. Um, I haven't seen any stuff like air-conditioned places. I know they do have it in Bangkok, I was told, but I haven't been able to find any information. But anyway, um, don't bring a lot of stuff. If you can leave it back in the United States at a family member's house or something like that, that would be the thing to do. Um, you really want to try to be as mobile as possible in Thailand because there's so many uh, things to see in Thailand and it's very inexpensive to get about Thailand. Uh, and to me being in Thailand would be a waste just to unless you're at the point in your life where you're ready to settle and you just want to find a nice spot up in the mountain or on the beach or on a lake or whatever then that's understandable but I think for the most part people want to be uh, able to to get up and go just my opinion uh, see Seaway 44 uh, Chuck why do they have so many power lines on each pole <laughs> Uh, I think India is worse, but um, they're not power lines. They're actually communication lines. They've, they've gone to fiber optics here in Thailand. The problem, I think, in Thailand is they're so used to doing things a certain way, and it's hard to get them to break from that until somebody, an official, comes and makes them take it down. But every time you get a new cable subscription, the guy will come out and uh, run a new cable every single time. I've seen him do it up uh, right here above our house at least three times a month. This, it's, it's retarded. But um, I don't know. When you buy a cable subscription, it comes with a new friggin' cable. But they do have fiber optics. They're starting to, to uh, bury uh, the bulkheads all throughout Thailand so that they can run fiber optics. And, a lot of places they have cleaned that up in Bangkok they have cleaned that up a lot and uh, the new areas that are being built throughout Thailand and the roads they're not having that stuff so 
it's just the, the towns like this. They're not, they're cables. Most of that stuff is, it's crazy. Um, they could be falling down, dragging the ground and they'll just ignore it and run a new cable. Uh, bald, Baldi San Yuko, Yuko Suka. <laughs> Sorry, I know I screwed that up. I think it's a, that's like a Japanese name. I don't know. Chuck, I've got a question on water usage in Thailand. I keep hearing and seeing on various expat videos that you can't drink the water straight from the faucet. Uh, that all drinking water has to be purchased, filtered, bottled water, etc. How does using faucet water come into play in daily basis when preparing food? cooking and washing hands, dishes, utensils, and other surfaces for uh, dietary purpose. Um, in Thailand, we have a filter system in our kitchen that we bought. You can buy this at any store here in Thailand, a big store. Uh, when we're cooking, they use uh, that water. When we, our coffee, what they'll do is they'll fill up some bottles and they'll use that for coffee. They'll use that for cooking. Uh, as far as washing dishes, no. I don't, I brush my teeth with the water out of the faucet. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know that the water is that unsafe to drink. I mean, they still have a, they have a system here to clean water just like anywhere else. I wouldn't drink the water in the United States. It tastes like I'm drinking a cleaning solution, you know, uh, out of the faucet. Uh, I trust it here more than I would trust it back there. but. If you're living on a farm or living in a place where there's a water well, the water, of course, I think is going to be just as good as anywhere else. But uh, the restaurants, they'll buy a big giant thing of a uh, five gallon container of water for no money. It's cheap. They get them delivered on a daily basis. Uh, that's what they use to cook. Uh, you know, that's their livelihood cooking here. So most of the places that cook, they've been cooking for a very long time. Uh, if you start killing people with, with poisoning them uh, uh, with contaminated water or contaminated food, then their livelihood's going to change. So they're very cautious about uh, health. Gary Haynes. Hi, Chuck. I'm married to a Thai here in the States. We have a house in Thailand near Yang Talat. My question is, do you have a problem trying to understand the Thais who are also speaking Lao? Um, yeah, I don't speak Lao. I know a couple Lao words. I think the only reason why Thai people would be speaking Lao is because they're either, they either are Lao or they're speaking to another Lao person. Uh, on the border, a lot of people can speak Lao. But a lot of people on the Lao side can speak Thai. Um, so most, the only time I ever see somebody's in the market time and they're coming here selling stuff, I hear them all speaking Lao. Uh, Pona. Pona. Most of the people on the border, they can communicate one way or the other. Uh, but I don't understand really what they're saying. I've only been here a year. I barely understand Thai. Um, I've got a pretty decent vocabulary. I can, I can understand a lot of Thai. I can write Thai and I can read Thai. I can read Thai, but I don't understand what most of the words mean. Uh, but it helps me with my pronunciation. But um, Isan's a little bit different. The words are, some words are different and also the sounds are different in Isan. And Lao is, is uh, similar to Isan, but, but different. But I don't know what they're saying. So I think after being here in uh, Isan for about four years, I'm pretty sure I will understand, uh, of course, Thai, Isan, and, and hopefully Lao. I, I want to learn how to speak Vietnamese too. But right now I'm having a difficult time with Thai, only because it's something that, you know, I've never, the only time I've ever been around it is with Paige, and she, she speaks perfect English. So, you know, I met her in the United States, but I tried to learn a few Thai words from her, but uh, I'm doing pretty good at Thai. Uh, I'm just not there yet. I'm working on my, uh, my accent uh, a little better right now, but I don't know what the hell they're saying. I drugged that on, sorry. 
Andrew Kattenberg. Hey Chuck, long time subscriber, first time commenter. Thank you. I'm about 14 months out of taking an early retirement in Thailand. In Thailand. In Thailand. Likely the Huahin area. I'm beginning the process of accurately approximating the annual budget and I was hoping that you could help me on the particular, on one particular item. Other than fuel and maintenance, what would the estimate cost, annual cost of a vehicle ownership on a small non-luxury SUV? Say a 2006 Honda CRV registered to operate throughout the kingdom. Likely uh, just good liability insurance only also, is a diesel option worth the trouble? Thanks and keep up the great content. Thank you. Um, I think the diesel is definitely worth having um, just for the dependability. It's very hot in Thailand and diesel engines are very durable uh, compared to a gasoline engine. Um, that, to get a vehicle repaired here is very inexpensive. Uh, just finding a decent mechanic could be an issue. I just recommend taking it to the dealership uh, in a major city if possible. Um, insurance is extremely cheap. Actually, you can't register your vehicle without uh, the purchase of a government insurance policy, which is included in the uh, renewal of your registration. So. The tax is expensive every year that you pay. It just depends on what kind of vehicle. Um, and if it's over five years, they make you get a safety inspection. But it's really no, no money compared to the Western civilization. Um, I have, on, on top of the um, basic registration government insurance, I purchased Additional insurance, it cost me 21,000 baht for the year, and it covers a lot of things. Now, insurance, my vehicle, I, caught, I bought it just a little over 1 million baht. Uh, it's only insured for replacement value at 800,000 baht. And they don't do like a replacement value insurance uh, in Thailand. But uh, I got the most expensive package the best package that i could get and it, it's cheap i mean that's 22,000 baht is no money compared to uh, you know in the, in the standards in the united states i had a perfect driving record uh, my toyota tundra cost me a hundred us dollars a month for full coverage insurance and uh, you know that's twelve hundred dollars a year versus uh, uh 2200 baht you know 22,000 baht uh, but the tax just varies on on the vehicle. Sometimes it could be up to six thousand in baht. Uh, but the basic insurance on the registration it's going to be somewhere around uh, fifteen hundred to three thousand baht a year for that, and that's that's nothing. <laughs> so having a vehicle is not that expensive. Uh, the thing that's expensive is fuel. Um, I usually, to fill up my tank, it costs me about 1300 baht, and I can go about five, on the freeway stop and go, about 600, 700 kilometers on that. So you can hop on a plane and fly from one end to the other on a thousand baht normally. But having the freedom of owning a vehicle is, is the way to go for me. Um, T Mac. Hi, Chuck. I'm a new subscriber. I live in Wisconsin and I believe the temperature is going to climb to a balmy 10 degrees today. Yuck. <laughs> I have a friend in Pattaya that is begging me to come visit, but he is really into the party life in the red light district. Although I like having drinks and love women, I'm not sure about the red light district. Well, my question is, do you think Pattaya would make for a good vacation? Um, I think Pattaya would be a good spot for a vacation as long as you didn't spend your entire time there. It's easy to get a tour outside of uh, Pattaya, really, really cheap. Uh, you can go to Phuket, uh, you can go to Kochang, um, 
there's a lot of play. You can go to Chiang Mai on the other side really easy. Um, you can hop on a plane and fly to Chiang Mai or anywhere. Just don't spend all your time in Pattaya. Um, I've had a few subscribers that come here and find themselves falling in love with a, a girl that's never said the kind of things that... The women are beautiful and it's nothing like they're probably used to and they just spent their entire vacation in Pattaya and go back home and all they think about is coming back to Pattaya. That's great, I'm glad they found true love, you know, whatever, but um, go see Thailand. Thailand is awesome place to adventure and very easy to get around and very inexpensive. So if that's what your friend wants to do, then carry on without him or drag his, if he's gonna drag you to, to Pattaya, make him drag you somewhere else, you know, make him uh, agree to that before you come. Maybe he'll get a, a little change of atmosphere and want to get out of Pattaya. So not that Pattaya is a bad place, it's just not for me. I've been there three times. Um, you know, it's all what you want in, in Thailand, I guess. Tracy Love, oh my goodness. Why is anyone complaining about your intro? <laughs> I don't know. Nothing is wrong with the intro, thank you. I do love the long road trips you're taking in Thailand and share it with us. You're welcome. Do you have any plans to travel north area of Thailand, Chiang Rai, Chiang Mai area? Um, I do, Tracy. We wanted to go earlier, but it was raining pretty bad. And I, did, I don't want to go. Some of the places that I want to go can get kind of treacherous in the rain up in the mountains. So I, we didn't go that time. But we do have plans at some point going to Paige, mm -hmm. Chiang Mai. Are we going to Chiang Mai? Sometimes. Yeah, see? <laughs> we have plans sometime to go up there. Chiang Mai is like one of the most popular places to retire on the planet. So it's engulfed with Falang stuff. So I just don't like the touristy areas and I don't, I don't like the areas that cater to foreigners as much as I really love Thailand. So no offense to anybody that lives in Chiang Mai. Um, I've never been there really to complain about it. I just know from what I've heard from uh, discussing this with people every day on YouTube. And we do have friends that live in Chiang Mai as well. So I don't know much about Chiang Mai. I know it's a beautiful country. Are we going? Yes, we're going to go. I drugged that out, sorry. <laughs> what are you doing? What's wrong? Uh, Colin Ward. Hey, Chuck, great vlogs. Their mosquitoes are horrible right now. Ugh. Gotta have this in Thailand. Colin Ward, hey Chuck, great vlogs, thank you. The intro is your personality for your personal blog, so I quote to keep it until you choose to change it. Thank you. It is friendly, warm, and happy intro in my personal opinion. I have a question about vitamins and supplements. And she left, I need to ask her. Are vitamins available there and is the cost of of them cheaper or comparable to Western vitamins. My wife takes a lot of them, but if they cost less, then I don't see the reason to haul them across the globe. By the way, I follow about five or six vloggers on Thailand and find yours the most honest, informative, and reliable of them. Don't change, thank you very much. Let's ask Paige about the vitamins because she's got a pretty good source on vitamins. Uh, Tracy said something about my intro and Colin too and I was going to bring this up on my update. I had a vote uh, on keeping the intro or not. Um, you know I have way more people that love the intro that say they love the intro versus the people that complain about it but I have most people don't complain about stupid crap on the internet. Uh, out of the three out of the two to five thousand views that I get on a video only maybe 10% of those people would give me a thumbs up. 
and a very small percentage of people comment. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do what I like anyway. If you've ever watched my vlogs, you'll see that I had changed up the intro on every one. Every, I have ADD, okay? <laughs> Attention deficit disorder. So it's hard for me to concentrate on one thing, and I get bored quick. So I like to change things up, but the intro was catchy. It was easy for me just to play that and move on to the video, and I really liked it. But I just wanted to get your input. 61% of the uh, viewers said keep it the way it is. So that being said, I've kind of got a couple that I changed just to compromise because a high percentage said to shorten it. So I just wanted to try to mix it up a little bit anyway. Yeah. I'm sure she'll give me a goofy answer. Hey, uh, I got a question for you. Okay. Vitamins. Okay. Getting vitamins in Thailand. What's the best way to get vitamins in Thailand? Mm -hmm. I heard that comes straight from the US. And how much does that cost? Yeah, the shipping. They do, and you can get it all shipped from that website? Yeah. And is it just as expensive as America? Is it a little bit more or the same price? Same price in the US. It's okay. shipping. But you can't just buy a whole lot because it tax you, right? Okay. Yeah. iHerb.com. I'll put a link in the uh, description box. It's in English you can read too. It's in English. Thank you. Yeah. So she goes to the website and she orders the vitamins and has them shipped here. She actually did that while we lived in the United States. She shipped her mom vitamins from iHerb.com. Um, one problem that she had one time is she sent a lot over to her mom when we were in the States. And her mom got pissed because they ended up charging her tax for more than what the value actually more than what it cost us to ship it over here plus the cost of the vitamin they taxed her uh border tax for her to pick it up uh, that's the problem is 300 it's two to three 200 percent on goods yeah mm -hmm. like 200 percent oh she said keep it under 40 us dollars and chances are you won't get taxed. But anyway, don't send a whole lot of stuff at the same time. If it's just your wife taking them, then that's no worry. iHerb.com. Yeah. Rio for me forever. Chuck, as you ride your bicycle a lot, can you leave it unlocked and unattended while you go into a store for a half hour or more? Here in the U.S., if I... If it was unlocked, it would get stolen fast. Here, in most of the rural areas, it's pretty safe. Everybody knows everybody here. Um, if I leave my bike in Pattaya, maybe it'll get stolen, yeah. Uh, but for the most part, I don't really worry about it. Uh, I can park my bike, bike and go get a massage for an hour and a half, two hours, and leave it out in the street and it's still there. Here's, here's the thing is, I don't really, yeah, I don't want to buy another bike. It was expensive, but I don't really worry too much about stuff like that anymore. I bought a light a lot for the bike. I used it one time. It's a pain in the ass. I just I don't really care about stuff like that. But uh, uh, in Pratua, where we come at Fishing Village, people leave their keys in their mopeds and leave them outside. It, those people are very mostly honest, hardworking people. Same as here and. Uh, I think the biggest thing with theft, especially in the United States, are people are greedy. They need money. They need to buy crap. Uh, it's all about items and things, and the cost of living is extremely crazy uh, in the West. You know, so people are desperate for money. They can't get the they can't get a decent job to even pay for the crap that they 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 think they have to have. So people become. They become bad people because I think we're so, in the West we're so obsessed with being on top of the next person, you know. But uh, it's just not like that here. Um, you know, if somebody steals something, they're probably on drugs or they're in a bad situation. There's not a whole lot of opportunists to, uh, in Thailand for the most part. Kevin Flanagan, my concern is 
whether after marriage pet could get social security benefits should I die before her? Well, that's sweet of you. I have not been able to get an answer by internet resource search and thought some of your friends that have already dug into this. Um, I read this before. I, I did find some information on socialsecurity.org. I'll leave a link for you. Your wife has to be a legal citizen uh, or legal alien of the United States of America. She has to uh, obtain a green card or some kind of citizenship. Uh, and I think there's a, a limit where she has to have lived in, in America for, I want to say, five years. But uh, if you marry her over in Thailand, she's not going to get your benefits from America unless she is a, a citizen. But I will leave you the link in the description box to what I found about Social Security. Unless somebody here has a knows a woman that is collecting Social Security benefits from their dead husband, uh, they can obviously give their input, but obviously the person who died can't tell you how it turned out. And, but um, I, personally, I don't know. So I know Paige will get mine. She has a, a citizenship from the United States and is uh, herself able to collect Social Security at the age of probably 100 by the time she gets there. 70. 70. It's 70 now, 70 for me. Uh, <laughs> 75. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll leave that link, but you can call the Social Security. If you're in the United States, uh, you can go to a Social Security office and well, if you can speak to an intelligent person, you might be able to get some information, but you can call them. Uh, but if you type in a lot of times, uh, they'll have a, uh, a, a like a question and answer little box. You can type that stuff in. But I'll leave you a little link. If somebody else has some information, please uh, give your input. Bud Bar 52, Chuck and Page. I gotta love what you bring to YouTube. Thank you. How about a segment on older Thai women, around 50 to 60 years old? You talk about older Falang's men, older Falang men coming there to marry 20 and 30 year old women. Sorry, it's so loud, but if I close that, I'm gonna burn up in here. We do have air conditioning, but I don't feel like turning it on, so. Uh, you talk about marrying 20 to 30 year old women. I think as a senior citizen, I would have nothing in common with younger women. But a woman with a little, a woman with a little mileage on her we could talk about our lives and share stories about things that have come to pass. Yeah, um, let's talk about the last part. So if you're gonna find a woman around 50 to 60 years old in Thailand, which is very, very, very easy, easy to do in Thailand, you're still not gonna have a tremendous amount of things in common with a Thai woman. Um, the reason why Thai women want to find older men is because they don't want to run around and travel. And they're also worried about their Falang husband taking off and finding a younger girl. So they want to find a, a, a more secure man financially, uh, somebody that just wants to kick it back and relax uh, and enjoy life uh, and not run around Pattaya all day. You know, but um, what are you going to have in common with? What are you going to talk about? You really don't have a lot in common where you can talk about cult your, your cultures are totally different. So not to say that you can't find somebody that has, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how you would here in Thailand, but there are a lot of, beautiful 50 to 60 year old Thai women here that are just dying to find a uh, Falun companion. I talk to them on a daily basis, but uh, the 20 and 30 year old women are, are, they're everywhere that are looking to find uh, a good relationship and settle down with a Falun. Uh, they want to find the same thing. They'd rather find an older Falun who's for the same reasons. They 
They don't want to run around Thailand. They want somebody who's financially secure. And they, they don't want them running around chasing women all day like the younger men, getting in trouble. So she's a, my friend here, she's a single woman. She's really good at massage. She massaged my neck because I had a headache. She's a good cook. Tamahan B. Gang. Tamahan Gang. Nuak Gang. And she's single and beautiful, see? Yeah, beautiful. So uh, let me know that they didn't have any boyfriend. <laughs> so my me fan, my me fan. So the beautiful thing about Thailand is the beautiful ladies will always tell you, I don't have a boyfriend. So yeah, no, no boyfriend. Okay, see you later. See you later. This is her mother. Her daughter's looking for a falang husband, and she's like, Are you? Are you done? <laughs> 25. Oh, 25 yeah. years old. She's very beautiful, but yeah. this is Thailand. They come up and say, hey, do you know any Falangs? Yeah. My daughter wants to have half of a, a Falang baby. <laughs> she said your daughter wants to have a Falang baby. So anyway, there you go. The thing about Thailand is a lot of the men, and I don't want to stereotype, but a lot of the men they'll leave their Thai wives when they get a little older and they'll move on and go find somebody else or they have a couple of other women somewhere. It's crazy, but um, you'll see a lot of women get in relationships at a young age, have a couple of babies and, and be without a, without a man, without a husband. So that happens a lot in different cultures too, but there's a lot of, uh, of good females here in, in Thailand that uh, you can find. You, you don't have to jump on the first one that says, uh, I love you, you're perfect for me. <laughs> Just come to Thailand, you'll see what I'm talking about. Very friendly, friendly people. If they're, uh, if they're single and available, they'll let you know before you can ask. Armis Tuscany. So what the cop? Happy New Year to you too. A couple of questions for your next Q&A. Are you planning to convert your marriage visa to a retirement visa this year? And uh, what are the pros and cons of each visa? Many thanks in advance for your answers. Wishing you and Paige an even more exciting, happy 2018. Uh, I tell you what, Armis, I'm going to put your question on hold. I've actually completed a video about visas uh, and my personal experience with visas and, and the marriage visa versus the requirement visa. Um, I wanted to do this for a while, but I didn't want to do it till after I have been here for a year and uh, I've experienced some of the things that some people were asking me my own instead of asking somebody else. But, I put a little video together that will answer your question. Uh, it will come out in the next few days um, to answer your questions. If it doesn't, ask me again. The Bud Bar, Chuck and Page, one of your best blogs. Keep them coming. I'm not sure what you're referring to, but thank you. Question, back in the early 70s, I was told that the average education level for most Thai people was fourth grade level. Just by watching your vlogs and with the world competition, the global market changing, do you think there is more emphasis being placed on advanced education in the Thai culture? Very much so. Uh, their education system here is very good. They have the same thing as we do in the States. Uh, they go up to grade 12. Once you get into your higher level, like high school grades, uh, the that you have to pay for your materials, your books and stuff like that. It doesn't, it's not free. So a lot of people, uh, especially like in Laos, on the upper level education, if they're poor families, they won't go past typically like uh, eighth grade, ninth grade, uh, stuff like that. So there are a lot more private schools in Thailand a lot of people work and put their kids through private school so they can learn uh, a higher education and uh, multiple languages, mostly English. Aussie Crypto, another question, Chuck. Actually, you have two questions. Let me uh, 
start with the first one. Can you live, travel, and adventure the way you do without Paige and her fluent Thai language skills? The answer is really for those of us who wish to retire in Thailand but are not in the camp that are seeking Thai brides. I believe in the loving relationship like you and Paige share, not an arrangement as others seek, but each to their own. Do you think it could be done? Can you fly solo for a year or two without too many dramas until you can learn enough Thai language? Again, thank you for your time and, and I hope you enjoy your island holiday. I did, obviously, you watched it. Um, yeah, you can get by in Thailand, I think, without speaking Thai. People do it all the time. Uh, I have interviewed a couple people here that speak zero Thai, but they are married to a Thai wife or have a Thai girlfriend that helps them get by. Um, there are communities in Thailand where a lot of people speak English uh, without any issues. Uh, I personally feel it's very important for you to have around a, if you're going to move here, about a 50-word vocabulary. It's not difficult to do. Um, just set your mind to it and, 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 you know, and try, to, uh, try to do that. Um, yeah, I don't think that you could, I mean, I don't think you should come here and seek a bride anywhere. I, way I think you should just, if you don't already have a wife or coming to be with a girlfriend or a Thai wife, I don't think you should come settle down. I think you should uh, definitely come test the waters, experience Thailand, and uh, don't buy the first home or piece of property or, or get married to the first girl that says, I love you. I'll just come and check it out. Uh, the Thai language is difficult to learn, but it's like that anywhere in the world. You know, if I go to uh, Greece, uh, you know, I need to learn to say a couple of things, you know, but, you know, hand gestures, and, you know, you're limited to how far you can go without speaking the language. But anyway, I'm dragging this on. I'm going to do uh, one more for Aussie Crypto. I, I appreciate all your, uh, your questions, Aussie, and, and thank you for always commenting on my videos. I do really, I really appreciate that, sir. Huh? I'm going back and forth through your content to find a cost of living, retirement income requirement, but I have a slightly different question. May I ask if you budget your excursions, holidays, or is money no issue to you so you don't really think about it? Uh, I'm not prying, but genuine question as one can obviously retire to Thailand, but if they want to live and travel like you, how much extra should they budget uh, per year? Um, let me tell you what, what I do. Okay, no, yeah, money is important. You're a stupid person. Unless you just have a gigantic pot of money coming in a month, uh, you really need to budget because you know something may happen in the future uh, that you'll need to have some money put aside so I'm on a budget yes so here's the thing my budget is about a thousand baht a day okay um, I plan on spending roughly about a thousand dollars a month US dollars a month in Thailand I pay 5,000 baht a month to my mother-in-law to help with the food and the electricity. Um, my car insurance is 22,000 baht a year. My health insurance is about $100 a month. So on an average day here in Tat Panom, I spend 60 baht for me and Paige to eat breakfast. Uh, I spent about a hundred baht for me and Paige to go eat lunch, and then dinner is anywhere between sixty to three hundred and fifty baht if we go eat on the river. So all that we're not spending more than five hundred baht a day. Sometimes a lot less than that. So when I go travel. I have a lot of money that I didn't spend throughout the month or through the weeks, and then I, I'll put it to you this way. We just went on a 
couple week trip. I took out uh, 50,000 baht uh, out of the bank and I had it in my pocket. That's not true. I took 25,000 baht out once and 25,000 baht out a second time. So I came back home with 20,000 baht after all that period of time. So I spent 30,000 baht, a thousand, a thousand US dollars and we put gas in the car, we stayed in a few hotels, uh, and we bought food and we drank beer. And, you know. But when you're traveling through Thailand, it's a lot of the sightseeing stuff, there's no fees for that. And if there are, they're very cheap. We hopped on a boat and went to an island. The boat cost me uh, about $25 uh, to, per person to get across the boat, on a, across the ocean on a speedboat, you know. I, it's it's very inexpensive so no I really don't have an extra budget for traveling I just know that uh, I'm not spending unless I'm buying crap like uh, bicycles and cars and mopeds and stuff like that on my daily budget I'm not really spending any money so it's very cheap to live here in town and you're not going to be traveling every single day eventually you're going to settle in spend some time at home for at least a week or two, right? <laughs> um, I don't know. I do think about it, but then I really don't think about it. So, um, Anyway, I hope I answered some of your questions. Some of those were just some personal questions and personal experiences. Others, uh, I'm sure other people have other opinions because in Thailand, things aren't always the same, but please give me your opinion um, if you want to uh, help answer some of these questions. And I know some of you have helped me answer a lot of questions throughout the uh, comments through, through the past month. So I do appreciate that. Uh, I've got a lot of videos coming. I'm a little delayed because of the island. I couldn't put any videos out. Um, and up in the mountains in Pertuit, the video is slow. So I'm a little delayed on some content, but I, I wanna do an update for you here in the next couple of days. Thank you very much for all the awesome new subscribers. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Uh, we've got a lot of entertaining videos coming. And uh, if you got any questions, please ask them. Thank you so very much, guys. And uh, I'll see you uh, on the next video. Bye.